Welcome back to Control, episode 15. And today we're going to go do some coolant stuff. Hooray! Last episode we talked a lot about this place and how large it looks and how large we want it to be. Now we're going to go and talk about coolant stuff. First we have to kill some dudes. That is our uh, standard approach. Darn it. These guys explode, so you don't want to let them get too close. Gotcha! Okay, fun little uh, start to the episode, I suppose. Nope, not done yet. This seems a little excessive. I'm not playing on hard or anything, this is just how the game is. we are. Lots of dead explody people. Alright, let's go ahead and get in there. Ah. Mm. So I really like how this room looks. It is one of those asymmetric hallways that I love so much with the light wells on one side. Um, I, this never gets, this never looks old to me. But in this case, they've got these really heavy pipes here, serving as a vertical drop, which makes the vertical rise appear even more significant, and I think that works really well. If you wanted to learn how to deal with this kind of... If you wanted to learn how to deal with this kind of visual, you could do a lot worse than studying Control. Control uh, does them great. So, yeah. Got some loot in here. An extremely bright lamp, for some reason. Oh! I didn't know you could actually come out here. That's fun. Not a big deal. I was hoping it would kill him. No luck. So we're supposed to power up the, the unit. We're supposed to power up the unit using this thing. No big deal. Just a basic introductory sequence. Got some flying jerks. That didn't work. Oh, for creep's sake. So those folks can dodge the first thing you throw at them, but they can't dodge the second. That's why you throw two things at them. Um, so there are a lot of games that explore this idea of sudden color shifts in the level to show that you're now doing something serious business style. Uh, control is is not the best at it, but they do it pretty well. It's, it's solid. Um, so... Here we are in another red space with another control point. We're not supposed to move on until we claim the control point. We could come in here to the furnace chamber instead if we prefer. So the furnace chamber is a fun thing to look at. It's got these kinds of machines that you don't see too often. They decided that the machines that we were seeing uh, didn't look sturdy enough to be used in a furnace area. So these are... Uh, are more like boiler tanks. They they obviously can resist the heat and they've got more heavy duty tank stuff attached to the bottom there. We also see this new kind of tank. By the crash, did Ati mean barrels full of hazardous biological material? Oh, I dropped it. We're feeding the furnace. 
making some environmental regulations on waste disposal, but if that's what Ati wants, then I'll get it done. So over here we have a little bit of a cassette tape. My name is Dr. Pierce, lead researcher of the parakinesiology department. I believe... So she's going to tell us that she thinks that this thing can talk and uh, and that it wants some volunteers to get fed. So that doesn't actually tell us what we need to do. But what we do need to do is just feed it these things. So let's get to it. Since I'm currently immortal, I can technically go jump in there. But unfortunately, you get stuck and then you have to like quit to the menu and reload everything. It's just a pain in the butt. So we're not going to do it. She's over there still ranting about how she and she alone can hear the uh, can hear the uh, furnace talk. This is one of the things that I'm not too sure about with these uh, styles of games, because if if one of your researchers starts to hear voices and stuff, it's almost never going to be a sign that they're actually insane or you know that they actually have mental issues. It's always going to be a sign that there's something very, very bad going on. So I don't know why things like this, outbreaks like this, get thought of as, you know, oh, well, that's a crazy person or whatever. It's it's quite clear that, um, that the furnace probably does have something wrong with it because people don't just start hearing voices all of a sudden. It's not, it's not not on any sort of scale like if it happens once maybe but in a facility like this where you're more likely to hear something actually talk to you than to start hearing voices on your own it seems like it would get taken real serious where's the rest of the trash oh there it is one more hiding somewhere They're glowing barrels, but, um, I don't... Oh, there it is. Yes, that's what I wanted to grab. Thank you. So, when we do this, that'll have fed all of the trash around the furnace into the furnace, and I'm sure things will go well. By the way, I love this visual. Um, two ability points, huh? I love this visual. You really should think strongly about focusing on light when you're uh, doing level design. Light is what the human eye sees, so obviously using it in level design should be a fairly standard you know, way of thinking about level design. Uh, this game really, really enjoys these really bright lights either in the back of the room or off to one side of the room, and I think it works great. It's something you can study and have a, a lot of fun with. Here you can see the rest of the chamber. We can't really go anywhere else. I guess we have to claim this before we can move on. You'll get to see these uh, concrete elements fly backwards. Exciting stuff. I love this room. Um, this is just the standard vertical drop that we've seen many, many times so far. Oh, sorry. We've seen this many, many times so far where there's this giant skylight. This is a, a standard by now. But in this room, there is a real sense of verticality due to the layers between us and the skylight. I think that adds a lot. Moreover, this niche where the three pipes are kind of put into a part of the wall that was clearly made specifically for them. I think that's fantastic. I think that really sells this room. Um, you, can, you can shape the room around the purpose of the room, and it really helps to make us feel like this room has a reason to exist. So that's why I, uh, I adore this room. Cool stuff. Here we enter into a rock area. Caves are, are a pretty standard setup in games like this. They get lots of caves. A lot of people create caves and think that that's enough, but your brain, the player's brain, has to be able to attach to something. That's why caves are always best if there is something running along them. 
whether that's a walkway or a pipe or a handrail or a series of lanterns or even just a glowy like rock um, seam, you know, anything that will pull the player forward that is distinct from a giant jumble of gray rock. You don't you don't want the player to think of things as just endless gray rock. That's the key. I don't like that sound. Now, this part doesn't make much sense because what we're doing is we are going down around some vertical pipes, but there's no way that the humans wouldn't have installed stairs here, so I'm not sure why there aren't any. From a functional perspective, you know, level design wise, this makes perfect sense because stairs are much harder to make vary. Now, It's easy to make rocks vary in a, in a purposeful way, especially rock ramps, but staircases you need to put a lot more effort in. So by making these rocks, um, it, it's probably much easier to actually have them vary in a meaningful way. That said, huh. that said, I think that the one of the things they decided they wanted to do with this was they wanted it to feel like you're going into a natural cavern because they wanted to have the, the sensation that was behind me. They, they thought you would be getting tired of being in a building, and they wanted you to have a sensation of being kind of somewhere strange and uh, untamed, you know? There's the metallic doom that tells us that we're done. You can see those continue to go down, but this is our stop. To coolant pumps! So this machine here is where we're going to stop for the day, but I do want to talk about it before we move on. This machine is a wonderful design. If you're struggling to design machines, it's important to understand the kinds of things that make a machine look good. Now, first off, we can talk about how I like to think this looks like a mole. For some reason, it immediately reminds me of a mole, which would make sense because you're really far underground. But if you're really stuck on how your machines should look, feel free to look up things that aren't machines. You're not going to go too wrong. That said, the real secret of this machine is the fact that it is repetition with purpose. So you can see we've got some horizontal repetition, but each one's a little bit different. We got some pipe repetition off to the side. Each one's a little bit different. If the plant goes boom, we can throw the spoon in the coal. So to me, this just feels like a great machine. This is a fantastic machine. It looks organic and dangerous. It fits in perfectly with the with the visual of being underground. It's kind of hunched here, like it's gonna spring forward at any moment. I think it's a fantastic design, and you could do way worse than trying to copy some of these visuals. Or at least be inspired by them, obviously. Don't copy directly, just be inspired by. See you next episode.